year. Thank you, Miss Buck, and I am humbled to speak after so many moving personal stories, and I'm here because of Sky. Sky was five years old when he tragically died in August 2014, not from the medulloblastoma that he was diagnosed with, but from severe side effects of his treatment, the Milan Protocol. Now, we now know that a number of other children also develop similar side effects, and the Milan Protocol has now been withdrawn. Sky's mother, Sally, is here in the gallery today, and since his death, his family have shown extraordinary courage, raising awareness and funding for childhood brain tumours and setting up the charity Blue Sky Thinking to support research so that all children diagnosed with brain tumours have a better chance of survival. But Sky's story illustrates that while much is working in childhood cancer treatment, some key areas are in need of urgent improvement. I shall. I'm really grateful for giving where she knows I lost my own dear wife Val to secondary tumours, and indeed it's a year to the day that she started her palliative care. I very much share what she says about Sky's case, would she agree with me that more generally there is also a cruel paradox with progress that is being made in treating other cancers in that it actually increases the number of people because of the blood brain barrier who survive to get a brain tumor? That's a further compelling argument as to why there needs to be more research. Um, the Honourable Member and Friend has made a very important point, and I hope that the Minister shall respond on exactly that point. Um, but I do think that we should note at this stage that the overall story of childhood cancer over the last 30 years is a positive one. Eight in ten children with cancer survive five years or more, compared with just three in ten in the 60s. And we should congratulate the government for this, because it's clear that the work and funding that we do put into fighting cancer is money that is well spent. And as we've heard, that unlike most cancers, brain tumours are on the rise and underfunded, and because we're, the money which is well spent um, on cancer is effective, we need to put this right. Now, I want to focus on childhood cancers for obvious reasons, because despite causing more than a third of childhood cancer deaths, brain tumours only receive 6% of childhood cancer funding. Childhood cancers account for less than 1% of childhood can of cancer diagnoses in the UK, and of that 1%, 700 children are diagnosed with a brain tumour every year. It's the most common form of cancer affecting children and the most lethal, killing 160 children every year. And we must consider childhood cancer funding in its own right because children's cancers are biologically very different from adult cancers and to treat them effectively requires specifically tailored research and treatment. But the effect of this funding shortage, ethical challenges and small cohorts means that 50% of childhood cancers are part of a clinical trial and the remainder are treated using standard treatment guidelines like the Milan Protocol. And there are risks with this approach. As we've heard, cancer treatment is a brutal regime and can cause long-term disability. And this is particularly true of the childhood brain tumour survivors, 60% of whom are left with life-altering disability. In a few cases, like Skye's, these effects can be fatal. But currently... Thank you, Honourable Lady, for giving way. And she's giving, again, making some very powerful points, as other speakers have, which is also the fact where investment is so vital in this area that actually the costs of, those, of care for those lifelong disabilities, as well as in terms of preventing death, is one of the reasons why the government needs to invest in this area, basically investing to save the money in the long run. Well, the Honourable Member has made a very good point. This is not a subsidy. This is an investment which will reap a return. Um, because currently there is no formal infrastructure to collect and share data about standard treatment guidelines. Consultants working incredibly hard to save lives of young patients struggle with their inability to quickly access information about the potential adverse effects of very tough treatment regimes. In all of my correspondence about this with NHS England and others, the response that I get is we're trying, but it's very difficult. Now, I don't think that this is good enough because all life-saving cancer innovations are very difficult. And given the stakes, I simply cannot accept that this is an insoluble problem. The architecture for collecting the data is in place, but the lack of formal data collection requirements and a lack of a single responsible body has, is, has, can have as devastating consequences. Now, currently, the NCRS and the PHE are developing a pilot to improve data gathering, and I welcome that. But it does appear that it will be retrospective now, this may yield research benefits, but it falls short of the real-time data ne necessary to guide clinicians. In Skye's case, when his consultant noticed that Skye was deteriorating fast, she could not easily find out if any other children on the Milan Protocol had experienced the same side effects. 
and she was reduced to phoning around individual colleagues in an ad hoc way to ask their opinion one by one as Sky got worse. And in the end, it was too late. In so many ways, we're making tremendous strides in tackling cancer in the UK, including childhood cancer, but the absence of monitoring adverse effects of standard treatments for childhood cancers can lead to lifelong disability and death. Now, in an ideal world, all childhood cancers would be the subject of a full <coughs> clinical trial, but we have to recognise the challenges associated with research into childhood cancers, where cohorts of rarer cancers can be incredibly small and ethical issues are more complex, making recruiting participants difficult. This means that even with increased funding, which is clearly essential, there will be some childhood cancers that will have to be treated through these standard treatment protocols. I hope that the Minister, who I believe is a man of action, will hear the arguments that all of us here have made today about funding concerns, but I also hope that he will take action to rectify data gathering and standard treatment protocols. If those adverse effects are properly collected, recorded and shared, we might be able to avoid more cases like Skye's and increase survival rates of childhood cancers even more. Philippa Whitford. For calling me in this debate, and it is incredible to see the chamber so full. I also pay tribute to the committee and to the honourable member for Warrington North in her incredible opening speech. As many of you know, I'm a breast cancer surgeon, so I've worked.